Mr. Taylor, is medical quackery big business? The federal government spokesmen usually estimate that in dollars, uh, the public is hoodwinked to the tune of about a billion dollars a year. I've talked to the federal government spokesmen who use this figure and asked them what this includes, and they've told me that this includes only those areas of quackery that involve inter interstate commerce, that is, the area in which the federal government would be involved. We in medicine are sure that at least this amount, again, is spent by the public on useless health care products and treatment on an intrastate basis, which means that the cost of quackery is more than $2 billion a year, which is more than is spent on all medical education and all medical research in any year. And to put it even more succinctly, John Minor, an assistant district attorney in Los Angeles, has said that quackery each year costs more lives in the United States than all crimes combined. And what person is most susceptible to medical quackery? The person who is ill with an illness that medicine has not been able to find anything that it will successfully control the illness or cure it. These are the areas that are of people of illness where people are most susceptible to quacks. Uh, and I don't think this means the poor people, the unintelligent people necessarily, because we all have cancer, we all have arthritis, we all have the various illnesses that medicine has been the least successful with. Diabetes at one time was a fertile field for quackery. With the development of insulin and the control of diabetes, quackery in, in, in diabetes has just died out. I am sure if somebody comes up with a cure for arthritis or a control for arthritis, the rampant quackery and arthritis would die out. The same thing is true of cancer, and it's many, many problems. When we think of the quack, we think of the unlicensed physician. Do you have many licensed physicians who could be considered quacks or practice quackery? Well, we hope there aren't many. Uh, physicians who are quacks. There have been historically some very famous quacks who were physicians. I'm sure these were dedicated people who thought they were right, who were proven wrong, who were just promoters of drugs or therapies or regimens of treatment that were not scientifically provable, that were just not, just did not do the job. I think very few of those people are in the organized medical structure, that is, members of their local, state, and national medical organizations. In the obesity area, for example, which is another quite large... ...cancer cure, that I, alleged cancer cure that I'm talking about is the RAND vaccine, which was manufactured over here in Cleveland and was uh, exploited extensively around the country as a cancer cure, literally. Thousands of people went to uh, Cleveland. This drug was found not to have been subjected to the tests that are prescribed by the Congress through the Food and Drug Administration. And after a long and very arduous and quite revealing federal court suit, both the manufacture and distribution of the RAND vaccine were taken off the market. It's just another example of an unproven drug that's held out as a possible cure for an ailment that medicine hasn't found a cure or a containment for. Now, the happy part of cancer is that if cancer is detected and treated early enough by a competent, competent physician, most cancer patients can recover. Mr. Taylor, where is the medical quack most active? The medical quack, uh, I'm sure you're not speaking about geographically, I'm sure you're talking about the areas of health in which they are most active, and that is easily answered. They're in the areas where medicine has been the least successful in finding either something to control a human illness or to cure a human illness. Therefore, we wind up with cancer and arthritis. Do they prey mainly on the elderly? No, they, they, they are not respecters of age. They prey on everybody. Anybody is, who is susceptible to what they try to peddle, they're willing to sell. Anybody. Mr. Taylor, you're going to address the uh, 16th Annual Kirkpatrick Memorial Workshop on Aging tonight. Yes, sir. And what is your message? The message, basically, is that all of us have to 
be educated on to as to what is good health practices, what a, what is a quack, uh, what is bad health care, uh, the ramifications that involve the shutdown of a cancer, alleged cancer cure recently, an arthritis cure that was uh, uh, most of the common practices aside from cancer, cancer victimize patients. Oh, arthritis, without a doubt, is the second largest area of, can of, of health quackery. And as I said, the uh, so-called drug that was used in the South, and 20,000 people in one Louisiana parish are supposed to have been subjected to this drug. It's a drug that ultimately was found to be dipyrone, which is a very dangerous, very potent drug that causes a granulocytosis, which means the blood cells eat up each other the red eat up the white, and you become very susceptible to disease and illness, and you die. Numerous people died after taking this drug that was dispensed by a Mexican physician. I'm very happy to say that the Food and Drug Administration, a congressman, Congressman Passman of Louisiana, and the American Medical Association has pretty well dried up the supply of dipyrone across the border from Mexico. Now, this doesn't mean that there isn't other areas where quacks function. In the cancer area, for example, the, probably one of the largest areas of concentrated areas of quackery in the world today is in Tijuana, Mexico, which, as you know, is just south of the border of California. They cater to all sorts of human ailments. You can buy, for their price, any of the discredited cancer drugs, so-called cancer drugs, all of the disproven drugs, the old Coke treatment, the old Hoxy treatment, Corbiacin. I'm not sure you could get the RAND vaccine there, but I'm sure if anybody wanted it, they'd get it for a price. Anything that's been discredited that anybody thinks might be helpful, you can buy in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. Leaf Court, another drug that was developed in Canada and was found to be not only useless in the treatment of arthritis, but very harmful in its side effects, is also being dispensed in Tijuana and in other areas of the world. They cannot be dispensed in the United States. The reason they can't be dispensed in the United States is because the drug not only has to be safe, it has to be able to do what it claims it can do in the, before it can be used in, in the treatment of humans. This is what our drug law means today. Mr. Taylor, the pill has been much in the news. Uh, is there much medical quackery in respect to birth control devices? I don't think there's any, qu there's any quackery of any consequence at all in birth control. After all, uh, Family planning and birth control is technically not medicine. It's a social problem. It's being handled and dispensed by physicians as a service to their patients. Uh, the pill, I suppose, is a pharmaceutical product, and I'm sure it is. Uh, whether this would be dispensed, there are many components of the pill that are great drugs. Uh, the pill is being dispensed as a service to the patients. Uh, not to treat them medically. I'm not sure it's a medical problem. I think it's a social problem. And, uh, obviously, medicine is involved because a physician has to pres prescribe in order for the, the female to obtain the pill. I think the Food and Drug Administration is now in the process of doing what should have been done probably many years ago, and that is to do the extensive research <coughs> in the pill and its possible side effects that will establish once and for all whether the advantages of the pill outweigh the disadvantages, in other words, the side effects, and whether it should be dispensed. What we all have to realize is when you take any drug, there is a certain amount of danger with it. You take the drug to relieve a health problem. It's the weight of the benefit of the drug that outweighs the handicaps that it might cause that permit it to be marketed. Now, I'm sure that if we wanted to go into a long discussion on the pill, more women die in giving birth to children than die as a result of taking the pill, or from the side effects of taking the pill. So I think it's a fallacious argument, but you can argue, therefore, the, the pill is saving lives. Uh, this isn't what we're talking about. We want a drug that doesn't cause side effects that might cause some people to lose their lives. I think ultimately, when the estrogens are reduced 
as the English insist they must be in the pill, I think the pill will be found to be the great human benefactor that it, it has been portrayed to be, and I believe it to be.